Good morning, everyone. It's great to see you on this, the second Sunday of Advent, and it's absolutely brilliant to have people with us in the service today. It's welcome to those that are at home and a real warm welcome to those that you... Uh, it's excitement, isn't it? <laughs> so a welcome to those of you at, ho at home and a real warm welcome to those of you that have joined us in the sanctuary. What you can't see at home is a group of people wrapped up very warm in clothes because the heating has been on and it's taken the edge off but the windows are open, so we've got a free flow of air coming through. I'm delighted today to be leading the service with Ray Stan Stanion. It's going to be one of those days where my brain's not working. Ray is the URC Synod Development and Support Worker, and Ray will be preaching for us today, bringing to us some of his music that will come up on video and you'll be able to hear. Please bear with us. This is the first time we've done the service with people in attendance as well as with you at home. So things might go wrong. The advice, best advice I can give you is just silently chuckle and enjoy the fact that nothing is perfect as we look in our service to the one that is perfect to Jesus Christ. So just bear with us and we will do the best we can. So welcome to our worship today and to this special Sunday, the first Sunday in December and the second Sunday of Advent. And as I welcome you, I'm going to light the second of our Advent candles. But first of all, let's just bow our heads in prayer. Come, Lord Jesus, warm our hearts with your love. Help us to prepare for your coming. Help us to see the good things we can do. Help us to see the good things others do. So come, Lord Jesus. Amen. And as we light that, we listen to the words of the wonderful Graham J Kendrick hymn, Like a Candle Flame.
O Lord, you have comforted your people, making paths where there seemed no path. You have lifted up valleys, relieved droughts, made high places low. You have gathered your people in the eternal place of love. You speak to our hearts and you forgive us for our wandering ways. Your light and love and faithfulness and work are true, ever true, always lasting. And we praise you for the goodness you are and the pathways you make before us. We've looked at things that are rough and judged them not to be smooth. We've looked at the valley and thought it could not be raised. We've observed the mountain, believing it was unscalable. And in so doing, we've become complacent. So forgive us for our complacency and our judgments. May make us see with the eyes of a pilgrim, knowing that you have called us on this way. And so make a pathway before us, a pathway that you lead us in love to be your people, preparing for your coming. And so we pray together the words that you taught us as we say quietly to ourselves, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And I'm delighted to welcome Flynn, who's going to come and sing, accompanied by John, on the organ, make way, make way for Christ the King. Make way, make way for Christ the King in splendor arrives. Fling wide the gates and welcome him into your lives. Make way, make way for the King, for the for the King of Kings. Make way, make way, and let his kingdom in. He comes the broken hearts to heal the prisoners to free. The deaf shall hear, the lame shall dance, the blind shall see. Make way, make way for the King of Kings. Make way, make way, and let his kingdom in. And those who mourn with heavy hearts who weep and sigh with laughter, joy, and royal crown, he'll beautify. Make way, make way for the King of Kings. Make way, make way, and let his kingdom in. And call you now to worship him 
problem with wearing a mask and glasses is you take both off at the same time. So thank you so much, Flynn. And I just want to invite Sam to come and share with us the, where we're up to with the Advent activities with the children and young people. So Sam, do you want to come forward? Thank you, Mike. Yes, we're doing very well. And I want to say thank you to all the children that have sent them wonderful pictures of your paintings last week of the Advent calendar that you was doing. You can't tell me I'm not loud enough. Gosh, that's a month always too loud. So yes, you've done some fabulous paintings and they look really, really good. So this week, with it all being about love, the things you've got in your pack is about making gifts for people. So the one that you're going to do is your Advent mobile. And you could give that as a gift or hang it on your tree. And the one of these is my favourite. I know it's his favourite as well. We did this last year. It's these beautiful calendars that you can make. Now this one I've just cut out and I've done a rainbow. This one is the one that my children would give because it's less work, it's just a photograph and it's of their pets. And this is one that I would do because this was one of the last days before we went into lockdown. And some of you might remember the picture that's sitting in here. This is when we had the party. But these make lovely gifts for your parents, your grandparents, a teacher at school, anybody, even me and Viv if you want to do it. Oh. <laughs> so that's that's this week's activity so i'm sure there's plenty of other things you can do and also the beautiful cards that you made the christmas cards that we've printed off you can be writing those and sending those to your friends and family so that's this week's activities mike thanks sam make sure i put my mask on this time yeah i've got to make sure i take mine off this time <laughs> <laughs> so the the cards you may have seen the wonderful cards that the children and uh, have made and we've had them printed and we've sent them out to our community contacts in Camberley. People like the care homes and the organizations we work alongside and normally work alongside regularly, just to say at this time, you're not forgotten and you're in the minds and the hearts of all those at High Cross. And that's so special. So thank you, Sam, for organizing that. So we come to our reading. A reading from Mark's Gospel, chapter one, verses one to eight. You know, you have that moment of doubt where you need to check that is the reading you're reading. It is Mark chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. The beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It's written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John came baptizing in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down to untie. I baptize with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Powerful words as we prepare in this time of Advent. And I'm delighted now to welcome Ray Stanyan, who, as I say, is the United Reformed Church Synod development and support worker who's always at the end of the phone for those of us in ministry to offer support and Ray's going to take us through the bible stories this Christmas in song but he's not going to sing we're going to have it on the screen 
and so that you can hear. It will be wonderful. Well, I hope it is. I'm sure it will be. Welcome, Ray. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, one and all in the room. Good morning, one and all in all the rooms. Uh, all are welcome this morning. It's always good when you come as a visitor to a church to just get one up on the exit on the um, resident minister just to go one better mike said he had problems with his mask and his glasses let me assure you i usually wear hearing aids and when i knew i'd be taking my mask on and off i just didn't bother this morning because glasses hearing aids and masks all going in different directions is is not fun some of you i know can relate and are nodding uh, you know exactly what i mean yeah i do bring greetings from wessex synod to you as wessex synod we're all in this together synod is us not them so welcome from us to us if i was to ask you this time last year what you were waiting for I suspect you might say Christmas. My guess is if I were to ask you what you are waiting for this year, you might say Christmas, but you might say vaccine. We live in very different times where we have very different priorities to the normal. but we still live in a world where we have to wait. And if you're anything like me, you don't like waiting, do you? We want what we want and we want it now because we know what we want and we want it now. We live in a McDonald's mentality and other fast food restaurants are available. Some of them serve food. Uh, it was no different for Joseph and Mary and the people of Israel, God's people, back in the day, as we used to say, where I come from. We're going to see um, a little bit of Joseph's character and a little bit of Mary's character uh, as we go through today. First of all, if we could have the video of uh, Joseph singing Joseph's In his Gospel, Matthew tells us this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Do you think he will have slept well that night? I'm not at all sure that he would. Rather, he probably would have tossed and turned in a nightmare of trying to find a decision, a way forward that was best for all, not least for his beloved Mary. Maybe his internal conversation, his nightmare, will have gone something like this. I can't sleep tonight Things just don't seem right with Mary I don't know what's going on I wonder what could ever be wrong with Mary She used to be so true to me so faithful and so sure 
Now I just don't seem to know her anymore. No, I just don't seem to know her anymore. There's just been so much change. She's acting strange. She's not herself at all. But her love means so much. I cannot leave it. But people say she's let me down. She's played around. It's news all over the town. But I. But then again, what if it is true? I'll have to go and see her and tell her what's been going through my mind. Maybe I should. Send her away, divorce her. Maybe that's what would be kind. No, no, I just don't want to lose her. But it seems she's already lost. So now all that. Left to do is say goodbye. All that's left to do is to say goodbye. Yes, that's what I must do. What's come over you? But after he had considered that, I don't know how good you are at waiting. 
I don't know how long I could stand here before you would start twitching, uh, probably wanting to leave the room and go and do something more exciting than just staring at me, for goodness sake. In his gospel. But sometimes when we wait, like the people of Israel have been waiting for a Messiah for generations. God had apparently been silent for 400 years. And yet faithful waiting for the Messiah that because God had promised would come. But sometimes when what we wait for comes, it isn't what we expect. And it doesn't come in the way we expect. Joseph and Mary would have been expecting a Messiah like the rest of the people who were faithful to God. Joseph was waiting, not only for a Messiah, but he was waiting to get married and looking forward to it, to his Mary, who he thought he knew. Suddenly she's telling him that she's pregnant. Whether it was God or another man, Joseph knew it wasn't him. What a torment. It's a bit of the Bible that I think we often skim over. We don't even normally read the Joseph reading, do we, in our uh, carol services. It's all about Mary and the baby and what Jesus would accomplish, and rightly so. But doesn't Joseph tell us something about us? Doesn't the story of Joseph tell us about the humanity of it? When Jesus comes, it's lovely and it's great and it's releasing. But when Jesus comes, sometimes our whole life, as we've known it, goes into turmoil, as clearly it did for Joseph. She used to be so good to me, so faithful and so true. But now I just don't seem to know her anymore. She's been acting strange. It's been so much change. But then, as we saw at the end of the video, the angel comes to Joseph too and says, do not be afraid to marry Mary because God is at work. And one thing I love, I mean, this, this song, I've given it two titles. One is The Forgotten Father. I referred to it earlier as being Joseph's dream. That's its other title. The Forgotten Father, because God our Father is the Father of Jesus. But how would it have been for Joseph? And that's what that song was about. But the reason for playing the song isn't just to play a song and to talk about some clever words. It's about how about when Jesus comes to you and to me? We're waiting for a new normal. But what if that new normal isn't going to be what we wanted it to be? What if it's not quite as much like we expected? What if it's not quite as much like the old normal as we would like? It's not going to be the same as the old normal, probably ever. And maybe that's a good thing because... We have an opportunity for God to come and just shake us up completely as he did for the life of his people, not least for Joseph. Embrace, not the way we expect God to come, but embrace God coming. For he surely comes as he's promised. We're going to hear another song. It's not me singing this time, in case you think I was wearing the wrong trousers when I was singing it. It's actually my daughter. Uh, but it is a song I wrote. We've heard about Joseph a little bit. Now let's hear Mary's side of things. What joy is mine.
No more shall prepare for war, but in the sun of bear will all be drawn to peace. The deaf one shall hear, and fresh vision appear, and lifelong captives in his name shall find relief. For the whole life she'd been looking forward to in order to be obedient to God and to be part of God's plans. And yet God gave back to Mary all of the life that she'd been looking forward to and a whole lot more. She would be known and blessed above all women, blessed above all humans other than Jesus himself because of her obedience to God's call. And the challenge for us today and at Christmas is not just to remember Jesus coming, but Jesus coming to us, not in an individualistic way, but coming to us as individuals in a personal way, as also coming to us in a corporate way. 
What does Jesus coming into your life mean? What did it mean for Mary? What did it mean for Joseph? Yes. What did it mean for the wise men and the shepherds and for Paul and for everybody else that's recorded in scripture? Yes. Martin Luther King and Mother Teresa? Yes. But what about me? What about you? What joy is ours when the Lord of time? Doesn't rhyme as well as what joy is mine, does it? What joy is mine when the Lord of time comes to me and says I'm truly blessed? And we are truly blessed, not because we will be the mother of the King of Kings, but because the King of Kings chooses to come and live not only around us, not only amongst us, but in us. What joy is mine because Jesus lives. Love came down at Christmas. Love incarnate, love pure and kind and perfect. Love came down at Christmas is actually one of my favorite Christmas songs, but we've already said that Christmas is going to be very, very different this year. Some of it will be the same. I'm still having turkey. I don't know about you. And the lights will still be going up eventually. But there'll be very different celebrations. Maybe some of us are still figuring out, well, where am I going to be on Christmas Day? Where am I allowed to go? Will I have to wear a mask whilst eating my turkey? We're not quite sure. We know which tier we're in now. Will that change? A little while ago, just a few weeks ago, I was musing about Christmas and looked at this song, Love Came Down at Christmas, and thought, well, so what does it mean this year? Never mind what does it mean in the Christmas carols? What did it mean for others? What does it mean for me? What does it mean for us? And in just a moment, we're going to hear a, a, a hymn, if you like. It was actually on Radio Berkshire this morning, so you're in good company. Looking at what does it mean? What is Christmas going to be like this year? And I just encourage you to remember in all of the difference, in all of the it doesn't quite make sense attitude of it all, because it, it, life doesn't make sense at the moment, does it? It's not what we're used to. Actually see that as a good thing. Because do you think life made sense for Joseph? Do you think life made sense for Mary? And yet they trusted God. And most certainly, God delivered. If we put our trust in God, most certainly, God will deliver. Why? Because in Emmanuel, God with us, God has already delivered. To him be praise and glory because love came down at Christmas. Amen. feasting can we meet for just one day can we mark your birthday doing what the experts say
what will be our normal in our tears with limits set how can we be certain nothing good slips through the net all that interaction people sharing time and gifts how can we continue showing love and healing rifts all this leaves me thinking what on earth is this about? Where now is this Jesus in my worship, in my shout? Thanks, Ray. That was just a fabulous message and wonderful as we prepare and come together for the first time in the sanctuary as we prepare for Christmas. We're going to move into a time of communion. So those of you that are here with us in the service, there's nothing you need to do. But those of you that are at home, this is the opportunity to go and get something, some bread and some wine or something similar so that we can share in communion together. And as we prepare, we remember the words that Ray has just shared with us. What's this Christmas going to be like? But there is one steadfast thing, and that is Christ himself. So just bear with us one moment. I will invite Gillian to come up. Ray, do you want to go and grab a seat down there? Um, and to do this, I will keep my mask on um, and just need to move the camera. <laughs> You always have to do it more than you think. There we go. So Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. So come to this table, not because you must, but because you may. Not because you're strong, but because you're weak. Come not because any goodness of your own need to go to come, but because you need mercy and help. Come because you love the Lord a little and would like to love him more. Come because he loved you and gave himself for you. So come and meet the risen Christ. For we are his body. Let's just try our heads in that. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, 
all desires known and from whom those secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And for, so we hear the story is shared by the Apostle Paul. For the Apostle Paul tells us of the institution of the Lord's Supper. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord gave us on the night when he was betrayed. When he gave thanks, he took bread and he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So let us just bow our heads in prayer. Loving God, we praise, thank you. For your love shown to us in Jesus Christ. We thank you for his life and ministry, announcing the good news of your kingdom and demonstrating its power. In the lifting of the downtrodden and the healing of the sick and the loving of the loveless, we thank you for his sacrificial death upon the cross, for the redemption of the world, and for your raising him to life again as a foretaste of the glory that we shall share. We give you thanks for this bread and this wine, symbols of our world and signs of your transforming love. So send your Holy Spirit upon them, we pray, and upon us, that we may be renewed into the likeness of Jesus Christ and formed into his body, as we pray in his name and for his sake. Amen. So when you receive, come to receive. I will come around with the bread and place it with some tongs into your hand. Just see it as you receive and be thankful. Julian will then follow me with the cup. Do you carefully take the cup out, ensuring you don't touch any others. And just retain that. Um, and as a souvenir, you can take the cup with you. If not, just pop it in the holder at the back of the chair and we'll collect them in afterwards. For those of you at home, just listen to the music as we share together. So Jesus said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then in the same way, I took the cup and said, this cup is a new covenant, sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this in memory of me. No. <laughs> Thank you. 
those who are struggling this morning in their pain. And we ask that you would be with them. And we pray for them. For you to go to us in them. To heal and ask for our love. And so in the stillness of our hearts, we pray for those who are sick that need to feel the love. Our friends, Lord, come ever nearer. Come to rejuvenate our pain. Come to fortify our social conscience. Come to open wide our eyes of wonder. So that when the Savior comes, he may steal into our hearts. So come, Lord Jesus. Be with us this day. And surround us with your love. So as we close our service, we've got a final The love of God comes to us. The words will come up on the screen. And you'll be able to hear the music. And um, we'll just sing a long while. And come with you. It's a wonderful book. The love of God comes to us. of God comes close where stands an open door to let the stranger in to mingle rich and poor the love of God is here to stay embracing those who walk his way he's a